I'm at the foot of the ladder. The LM foot pads are only depressed in the surface about one or two inches. I'm gonna step off the LM now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. The infamous words spoken by Neil Armstrong as he became the first man to walk on the moon. A very historic moment in history that fueled America and crushed the Soviet Union's dreams. But what would happen if it didn't play out like that? Well, that's exactly what we will be discussing today. Hey everyone, what's up and welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions. The voice you're currently listening to belongs to me, Lindsay Ivan, your voice of reason for today's video, which is, what if Soviet Russia won the space race? But before I begin, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to Life's Biggest Questions. With that being said, let's dive on into the video. So let's start from the very beginning. It's the mid 20th century and World War II is at its end point, but it's not over over just yet, a new conflict has arised the Cold War. Tensions between the Soviet Union and the United States are at a high. Then in the late 1950s, space became the battlefield for their competition. Both parties fought to be the first in space flight capability, but there could only be one winner. On October 4th, 1957, the Soviets launched Sputnik, which is Russian for traveler, which became the world's first artificial satellite and first man-made object to make it to Earth's orbit. This was greeted with a huge huge surprise. Americans were left speechless. How could they have successfully done this before the US? Especially since they were left devastated after World War II. This was the beginning of a very long and devastating competition. Less than a month later, the Soviets launched Sputnik 2, which contained a dog named Laika. It wasn't until 1958 that the US received their first achievement in the space race. They launched a satellite named Explorer 1. That same year, NASA was founded and announced that they were determined to send humans to space. Now, for the first half of the race, it was said that the Soviets were way more ahead than the US. They had many firsts. They had Luna 1, the first artificial object to escape Earth, Luna 2, the first spacecraft to reach the moon, and Venera, the first spacecraft to head towards Venus. The US was way behind. Then in April of 1961, the Soviets sent Yuri Gagarin out to space, and he he became the first person to orbit Earth. But all of these successes did not stop the US from trying. In fact, it propelled them into working faster and harder. On May 5th, astronaut Alan Shepard became the first American in space. After that success, President John F. Kennedy announced that the US would land a man on the moon before the end of the decade. Then, a few months later, he delivered his famous moon speech, which included the line, we choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Or maybe it's because you really wanted to show the Soviets who's boss. Over the next few years, each participant in the race took several firsts. In 1962, the US had their first interplanetary flyby with Mariner 2 passing by Venus. And then they had the first Mars flyby in 1965 with Mariner 4. But the Soviets sent the first woman into space, Valentina Tereshkova, in 1963. The US didn't achieve this until 20 years later. Nonetheless, it seemed like the two were neck and neck battling for first place. Sure, they both accomplished many historic firsts with regards to space, but they both wanted to be the first one to send a human to the moon. In 1963, three American astronauts were killed during a launch, but the US kept pushing through. In 1968, they launched Apollo 8, which was the first manned space mission to orbit the moon. And then finally, on July 16th, 1969, Neil Armstrong, Edwin Buzz Aldrin and Michael Collins set off on a mission to land on the moon, and it was successful. And from there, the US won the space race, or at least it's widely considered that they did. That was quite a long journey, with several failed attempts along the way on both sides. But what would have happened if they didn't win the space race? That's the question we need answers to. So the first theory is by space historian Dr. Christopher Riley. He believes that if the Soviets won the space race, then they would have continued on with multiple other moon missions, and they may have even built lunar bases. If Soviet Russia won, that means they may start taking things to the next level. What else can they beat the states at? 
What else can they do in outer space to continue proving to other countries that they are the boss? It would eventually get very costly. Who knows where they would start pulling funds from. Furthermore, this win might just fuel Russia. In 1947 and 1952, magazines in the states were saying that the first in space will win the Cold War. But space policy expert at American University Howard McCurdy said that what this really meant was that the nation that wins the space race will control the earth and space. So the Soviets would get super cocky and be like, we are the masters of the space, our next step is to conquer the world. If this is true and they claim space, then they may try to stop the US from doing any venturing to space. The Soviets will probably be like, oh, we got here first, so we have dibs on space, even though that's not really how it works. But if that did happen, then all of the discoveries NASA has made would no longer be a thing unless they fought for control. Let's move on to our next point. So if America did lose, one of two things may also happen. The first being, they massively cut down NASA's funding and place the money into a system they can trust, like military projects or something like that. Or they increase NASA's funding to try to become better than the Soviets. Since the Soviets got a man on the moon before them, they will be under immense pressure to do the same and quickly. They wouldn't want to be too far behind. The Soviets may have done it first, but the US would still still want to prove that they can do it as well. But this may result in the US rushing the attempts to try and do it as quickly as possible, meaning they are leaving more room for error. Rushing this could lead to more deaths of their crew members, but the competition wouldn't stop there. The US may just do something outrageous to try and one up them. Maybe it's doing something like sending a whole family to the moon. Stuff like that to prove to the Soviets that, hey, you may have gotten the first man on the moon, but we got the first family on the moon, huh? Beat that. Then you'll just have an ongoing cycle of both sides trying to one up each other, doing more and more extravagant things in space. It truly wouldn't end, it would just continue going on and on. This would leave both parties devastated. Lots of passengers would probably lose their lives, citizens would get tired of the ongoing competition, and they would waste millions of dollars. Now, I want to briefly touch on the incident that occurred in January of 1967. In America, their spacecraft caught fire during a launch simulation. Three astronauts were killed killed in this incident. Soviet Russia winning the space race would make them feel like these three individuals died in vain. They risked their life and their team still lost. That would make their team members feel pretty crappy. They can either go about this two ways lose hope and quit, or push through to make those three men proud. Additionally, former NASA historian Roger Launius doesn't believe the US would have succeeded in trying to send humans on other deep space missions if they lost the space race. He says, and I quote, if you publicly announce that you lost the moon race and that your technology was not up to snuff and your economy was not sufficient to support it and all the other stuff that goes along with an admission of failure, why would you turn around and say, Oh no, we're not going to do that. We're now going to do something that's at least in order of magnitude more difficult. You're setting yourself up for failure a second time. It would definitely be a huge embarrassment. They wouldn't want others to see them fail again. So they may just stop focusing on space travel and instead put their focus on something else. But Roger Launius and Howard McCurdy both believe that the US would have proposed the idea of a joint venture with the Soviet Union. They would make some sort of deal with them to get an American man to the moon. Hey, maybe it would be the beginning of a long friendship between the two. Or the Soviet Union would have been like, back off, you're only being nice to us because you lost, why should we help you? Who knows? what America will offer them in exchange. If they are desperate enough, they may make a drastic deal with the Soviets. Roger and Howard also believe that if the Soviets won the space race, then the fall of the Berlin Wall probably wouldn't have happened. Not only that, but the Soviet Union may still have had control over most of Eastern Europe. Then some undecided countries may have allied with the Soviets instead of the Americans. This would be a huge accomplishment for Soviet Russia. I can't emphasize that enough. Their propaganda would be insane. They would be going on on and on for days, months, and years about their victory. Maybe they will get more countries on their side and become a more powerful force. Not only that, but maybe the undecided states would think that communism was the way to go. They may think that if they follow communism, then they too can make such remarkable achievements. So that's pretty much it. 
The US will either give up on space travel completely or push through and try to beat the Soviets in other areas. I can't see them going down without a big fight though. Seems more likely that it will be an ongoing competition. Meanwhile, the Soviets will be super cocky and feel like they are the leaders of the world. And that's all for today's video. Let's move on to our comment shout out portion. I'll be shouting out comments from my video What will the world look like in 10 years? Ganon Tice commented, Life's biggest questions. What will 2030 look like? Me. Apocalypse. Okay, don't even joke around like that. I'm sure everything will go back to normal eventually. Hopefully. Meso Aguirre commented, No one's going to read this. Well, I did, so ha, huh, take that. Topsy Crypt commented, Next time you visit someone with an Alexa, hey Alexa, set 3 a.m. alarm with horror movie sound effects. That's so evil. I like it. <laughs> and that's all the comments I'm shouting out for today's video. Make sure to comment something down below for a chance to be featured in our next comment shout out. And as always, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to Life's Biggest Questions for more thought provoking videos. I've been your host, Lindsay Ivan, and stay curious, YouTube.